Quick WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. A happy holidays to everyone. I'm wearing my red Coons Ford shirt. I was wearing all my green, not for the Packers last week, uh, but for my Dundalk High Owls, so even though it looked like 18,000 of them showed up last week for the Ravens game. We're off to Cincinnati this week, and I know that because after the Ravens lost their third game in a row, Everyone said we're on to Cincinnati, so I know it's Cincinnati week. Usually I reach to friends uh, and uh, and former foes out in the Cincinnati area. Dan Hort calls all action for all things. Bengals, the surging, promising, upstart, first place, Cincinnati Bengals. We uh, welcome him back onto the program. What's going on, man? Happy holidays to you. You are, you're, you're a busy guy this time of year. I, I appreciate 15 minutes of your time, Dan. Yes, sir. My pleasure. It's been a fun year in Cincinnati, not only for the Bengals, but for the UC Bearcats. I do their games as well. Heading to the Cotton Bowl to take on Alabama as a final four participant. First team outside of the Power Five to ever do it. So it's been an awesome year for me personally and for football fans in Cincinnati. Well, you know, that's why I led with that, because I figure you you want to give me any bear. You, this is a. I'm looking at the It's a good week to talk about it, right? I mean, you, there is. Th- this has been, I guess, for the college bowl system. Are we really allowed? It's sort of like Puerto Rico. Are we really in or are we really out? Like, you know, do we do we get a chance to play or do we not? I I, I would think that this is um, uh, after all the hard work and the belief, this is a real opportunity, right? They made history. Nobody really thought they could do it outside of Cincinnati. A, a so-called group of five team had never been selected for the four-team college football playoff. And when you're Cincinnati or any team like Cincinnati. Like everything has to go right. I mean, every possible thing has to line up at the right time. And I said before the season, five things had to happen for Cincinnati to make it to the 14 playoff. Number one, they had to be great the year before so that they could start the season highly ranked. And that was the case. They started in the top 10 because they only lost one game last year and it came out a last second field goal in the Peach Bowl to Georgia. So that was number one. Number two, they had to have a great quarterback come back. Desmond Ritter came back. Um, He's going to be a first round NFL draft pick. So they were two for two there. Number three, they had to hold on to a great coach when other schools tried to poach him. And they've done that with Luke Fickle. Number four, they had to have high profile non-league games to impress people around the country. And they went on the road and beat Notre Dame by double digits. And then number five, the hard part, they had to run the table. So they've done that. They're 13 and 0. They get their chance as a big underdog now, a double digit underdog against Alabama on New Year's Eve. And, you know, let's face it, very few people expect them to uh, even have a chance, much less win the game. But I've seen this team now for two years. They've lost one game in two years, and it came on a 53-yard field goal with less than five seconds to to go against Georgia last year. So I think they've got a chance. Maybe it's a slim chance, but they've got a chance. It's crazy the Bearcats history, right? Like, I mean, John Harbaugh, big part of that. Rex Ryan, uh, my boy Brad Jackson's running around here uh, as well. But, but I, the ties to the to the Bearcats and even like women's lacrosse from here. Lots of Baltimore kids have gone out there. I know lots of parents with lots of Bearcat stuff. So. It sort of sits in front of me in a way that, like, Wake Forest didn't when we were in the ACC and, you know, other schools, that there's there's a lot of Bearcat going on. And I think maybe there's more pride there than people realize in a city without a hockey team, without a basketball team, with a struggling baseball and football team, that this is really sort of um, a, a, a different vibe because it's not Penn State out in the middle of the country. It's an urban school. The John Harbaugh tie in particular, plus Wink Martindale, who was an assistant coach at Cincinnati under Rick Minter, they were both on his staff. And John Harbaugh interviewed for the Cincinnati head coaching job twice and didn't get it. I actually recommended him one time because I got to know him when he was an assistant at UC. And I thought he would have been the perfect candidate to take over at head, as head coach. And he really wanted the job. But things worked out for the best for him. And now they've obviously worked out well for UC. Uh, He would have been great at Cincinnati, but he's obviously been phenomenal and happy for because I really, when he was a UC assistant. Dan Horton is joining us here from Cincinnati. We got a little technical difficulties, but we'll, 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 we'll get the vine together here. Let's talk Bengals. Uh, you know, obviously we've been watching from afar, beating the snot out of the Steelers and then stubbing their toe and the jets and like, uh, we've been watching and monitoring this. Um, certainly it's real, right? I mean, they're a good football team. I, we have some questions about all of our backups and the backup quarterback and everything that's going on here. But what's happening in Cincinnati is not a fluke at all. It it feels 
very real, like they have moved on from Marvin and that era and finally moved on from the the Atkins and just all the guys that we saw forever. This is a fresh cast of players and one that really took care of business here a few weeks ago. Well, that's for sure. That might be their most impressive performance of the year, and they've had some really good ones. But really what you have in Cincinnati is a team that's one year ahead of schedule. I think Bengals fans thought that this was where they would be next year with an emerging young roster and a tremendous quarterback in Joe Burrow. And they just arrived one year early. But it has been a roller coaster ride. And I think it's because they're a young team that hasn't been in contention for the last five years. So they're inconsistent. They can be awesome on some Sundays like they were at M&T Bank Stadium back in week seven. And then they can totally lay an egg, which they've done on several occasions, including a loss to the New York Jets. So you're never quite sure what you're going to get from week to week. I think maybe that's par for the course because of the youth on the team and the youth of the head coach. I mean, Zach Taylor is getting better and better on the job in year three. I think the Bengals are going to be really formidable in the next few years uh, because the young nucleus is great, but they're pretty good right now. They really are. Dan, I would say for this week in this game, these challenges that step up for these young teams, you've been down this road a hundred times, right? And I've been a hundred because you're in Cincinnati. I've been a hundred because I'm in Baltimore, but Carson Palmer, all that you guys went through losing with Dalton and Marvin can't win a playoff game. We haven't won a playoff game in 30 years and all of that that goes on. The fans have lived with that. You've lived with that. You, all everyone in Cincinnati, but for the players, this is all kind of new, right? They two years ago these kids were in college, running around. Four years ago, Zach Taylor somewhere else, you know, playing in other teams. This is a new thing for them and a new challenge. And I guess um, the the tiredness that comes when you haven't won from the fan base or that fatigue that's there. This is all new and fresh, and to see them face up against the Ravens a couple of weeks ago in an opportunity to beat them. They haven't lost to the Ravens a bunch, and the Ravens haven't lost. This is a different kind of Ravens team right now, too, obviously, with a bunch of backups. But I do feel like there's some inertia for some lessons that this is this is a new group in Cincinnati, and there there is no history for them. Uh, but there is for us because of the laundry, but not for them. Yeah, that's true. And there are very few players on this Bengals team that were part of the teams that went to the playoffs five years in a row under Marvin from 2011 to 2015. The punter was here. The, the long snapper was here. C.J. Uzama was a rookie in 2015 when they started 8-0 and made it to the playoffs, but Andy Dalton broke his thumb. But that's about it. So they've got this uh, this core of young players that has survived some really tough years where they were out of it early. Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, Sam Hubbard, Trey Hopkins. I'm so happy for those guys after playing their hearts out in December when nothing was on the line other than personal pride. Now they're involved in a game and three games, really, in the final three weeks of the season now where a ton is going to be at stake. I can only imagine how great it is for them to show up for work uh, Monday through Saturday, knowing that this means something because there can't be anything harder in the world than playing this sport and putting your long-term health on the line for our entertainment when you've got no chance at the prize. So for guys like that, uh, it's an awesome feeling, I'm sure. We're banged up, obviously. I mean, if I'm doing your show, we're talking injuries up and down and what happened with the secondary last week and COVID and the running backs at the beginning of the year, all the stuff we were talking about back in week seven. For the Bengals, how does it feel right now? At least, I mean, I, I see the quarterback running around upright. I watched him running around against the Broncos the other day. But, but injuries, this is the time of the year when we're questioning that 17th game, I think. Yeah, everybody has some injuries at this point, but the Bengals, knock on wood, are about as healthy as any team in the NFL, and that's been a key to their success this year. They have not been ravaged by injuries. They'll be missing the right tackle this week. Riley Reef is probably done for the rest of the year. He's on injured reserve. Technically, he could come back for the finale, but they don't expect him to. Shidabe Awuje, who's their best cover corner, was on the COVID list last week. We don't know yet if he's going to play on Sunday. There's a chance that he will. They've been hit hard at the linebacker position. It's funny how it works in the NFL. I think for every team, there's always a position that just gets ravaged by injuries. It was running backs for the Ravens, you know, going back to training camp this year. For the Bengals, it's been linebacker. They've got two left that can play. 
Jermaine Pratt and Marcus Bailey. After that, it's a bunch of guys that have been practice squad guys or, or waiver wire pickups. So they only play two at a time. It's not a team that plays three linebackers very often. So as long as they've got two, I think they're okay. But right now they're down to two. But really, other than that, they've been in pretty good shape this year. And in comparison to most teams, uh, that's obviously a big thing in the Bengals' favor. Obviously, it's a little different around here. Christmas week, you know, I, I've got my hat and my purple hat and my spirit going here, uh, as you would expect. But um, we haven't won in a month. We're playing with the backup quarterback, maybe. Maybe the starting quarterback, Gimpy. Certainly without large swaths of the secondary now with injury and COVID. This is a whole different story than eight, ten weeks ago and how the Bengals would feel about the Ravens. I know they're going to prepare. This is a different team, though. And um, uh, it, to feel the disappointment around here of this sort of mudslide the last month has been difficult. I'm sure it has been, but they're two two-point conversions away uh, from having two really impressive wins in the last three weeks and from being 10-4. and four. So regardless of who John Harbaugh is trotting out there, the Ravens are still playing well, I think, a healthy Huntley is playing as well as an injured Lamar, if not better. Uh, so I know the Ravens have an unbelievable list of injuries this year, but kudos to them because they're still playing really well. And I think that's the way the Bengals are looking at it. Send me a bowl of chili. I, I am not coming in for the holiday this weekend. Uh, give my best to Dave. Give my best to everybody there uh, in the natty. And uh, who knows, you know, if things go this way, that way, we could be coming back in a couple of weeks or you could be coming here. I think – Anything's possible at this point, especially how difficult these schedules are for everybody the next couple of weeks. The division is truly as good as it's ever been for a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, that's a tribute to Cincinnati and Cleveland picking it up and keeping the pace with the Ravens and the Steelers because Ravens-Steelers is always good this time of year. But this is a real dogfight. This is uh, an interesting little t mini tournament before the tournament, right? To be separated by one game from top to bottom with three games to go and everybody playing everybody else, it's unbelievable, really. I mean, this is the NFL's dream for everybody to be in contention a few days before Christmas. And that's pretty much the case this year in both the AFC and the NFC. There are a few teams that are thinking about the draft, but 75% of the league right now is still thinking we've got a chance. And that's awesome for fans. It really is. Dan, let's just rejoice. We can all agree on one thing, even though you're in Cincinnati and I'm here in Baltimore, that the Browns are still in last place. So we can all agree on that, at least for Christmas. It feels right at home. Dan, take care of yourself and, uh, you know, enjoy the call this week. I know it's going to be a busy week for you. Stay safe from the, the virus thing and all that. But I do appreciate you zooming in and uh, spend a little time with us. It's always a pleasure. My pleasure, Nestor. Happy holidays to you. Thanks for having me on. Dan Hoare joining us here, the play-by-play -play voice of the Bearcats fighting from below to become a national champion as well as the upstart Cincinnati Bengals. I've got my purple hat out. We'll be monitoring it. Luke is out in Owings Mills. By the way, Royal Farms, free coffee on Christmas. If you got the Rofo app, want to throw that out for everybody who enjoys our reports and uh, Luke's reports from all things purple this week as he, uh, we keep a watch on the COVID. We are WNST AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking Baltimore positive.